People can see a lot of success when they use a dog training head collar with their dog. They get less pulling, they have generally more control. But a head collar is a piece of training equipment. You can see early success with it, but you don't want to become dependent on it. So today, Instructor Steve is going to talk to you about the process of weaning off the gentle leader. So before you choose a dog training head collar, make sure you watch this video. I'm Ken Steep. I'm Steve Walsh. Welcome back to McCann Dogs. So training aids like gentle leaders or other head collars are very powerful tools and uh, the question comes up a lot, uh, when do we start to wean off that tool? Because we don't want to become reliant on it. We don't want to use that as the tool that um, has our dog behaving or listening to our voice or whatever it is that we, uh, we expect from them. And it's come up several times actually lately. Um, people who have busy outgoing dogs that have found great success using gentle leaders, uh, which is sort of our, our preferred uh, tool around here. Um, and then they get in a hurry to wean off of it. Now I understand that weaning off is an important process, it's something that needs to happen, but what do I see from my dog? What indicators am I getting from my dog that tells me it's time to wean off of that and start moving off of it? And I say wean very specifically um, because it's important to transition away from those powerful tools. Um, incidentally, we have another video on gentle leaders on the, uh, uh, there'll be a link below or in the card up here that uh, you can click on if you want to see how to physically go between a full gentle leader to uh, removing the nose loop and clipping that nose loop up under the double D-ring or going to a straight flat collar. But just taking the gentle leader off and hoping that you get success is not the best way to set your dog up for success, oddly enough. Um, now, we talk about wanting to have our dogs uh, listen to our voice and verbal control is a big thing and a big um, portion of what we do around here. And the agenda leaders allow us to achieve that by being able to, let's say, redirect a dog or turn a dog away from something that's stimulating by speaking to them first and then using that. We take away the big tug of war of a flat collar. Everybody's had their young dog who has that big flat collar on and learns to sink their head and pull. That gentle leader allows us to overcome that very easily um, and build a little bit more success. But if I start to um, find that when I take that gentle leader off, my dog instantly goes back to pulling, I'm way too early in trying to remove that piece of equipment. And again, removing is not the best way to do it. It's all about weaning. So what do we look for from our dogs? Well, let's just take walking, for example. If I have a young dog that has wearing a gentle leader and we're starting to get some success and we're, we're working with nice loose leash walking at our uh, left hand or right hand side, wherever you happen to walk with your dog doesn't, doesn't really make a difference. We work walking on our left hand side around here. Um, as long as my dog is starting to reliably walk in that position on a loose leash and start to listen to my voice if I tell them, hey, let's go, come on over here, or if they get um, distracted by something, I can tell them leave it and they're offering that to, to check back in with me on that leave it, then I might actually start trying to not only just start to wean off that piece of equipment then, but find harder distractions, find um, things that are more difficult for that dog to work through. Um, environment plays such a huge role in dogs learning that um, before I take away any of these training aids that are helping us be successful, I will proof that behavior by putting them in as many different situations as I can. So maybe walking down my street, there they've walked you know, three times a day for however many days, isn't, very that exci isn't that exciting for them anymore. So maybe I'll go to the park, hopefully the warmer weather's coming. Um, and uh, you'll be able to get outside and work with those dogs. Find a park where there's, uh, you know, some kids playing basketball or find something else. Go to the, 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 that great park with all the squirrels in it. Um, really find those things that help stimulate your dog and be conscious of building their success. Use space as your friend. So if going too close to that baseball game is too much for your dog, start to work further away. And I would use those opportunities to proof my gentle leader um, skills before I even think about taking them off. And that time is different for every dog. Um, it really depends on what your dog is showing to you. Um, I, I often think about uh, removing things when I can't remember the last time I really had to use it. That to me is sort of a great analogy. If I can speak to my dog and say, hey buddy, come on over here and that dog willingly follows me without me having to add a little bump on the leash or something to kind of regain their attention, then I can start to think about, you know what, this would be a great time in this particular situation to wean off of it. Because again, if uh, my dog can be successful in certain situations, it doesn't mean they're going to be successful in every situation right away. That's our job to be consistent with them and help them understand no matter what. That means my gentle leaner and my weaning process becomes a little bit more fluid. So let's say I have worked through that uh, baseball game scenario, walking my dog back and forth past all those excited kids while that game's being played. I might spend the next 10 or 15 minutes with that nose loop off, clipped in with the leash clip back into the double D-ring and get some success in that situation at maybe 50 or 100 feet away. But again, my proofing process isn't just, okay, my dog is trained now. I might go a little closer to that baseball game or to those benches where those kids are sitting and eating hot dogs. Um, I would really push my dogs um, 
ability to understand that no matter what's going on around them, I can help them uh, be successful by listening to me. And you will find there's a little threshold, a threshold where my dog is uh, comfortable in the situation, calm, um, they are keyed into me, they understand what it is I want, and then you'll get to a point where they start to go, well, but those kids are very close and they're very exciting. And that's the area that I always look for, that sort of threshold. And I want to sort of stay just underneath it and build towards it closer and closer and closer. If I cross it and my dog says, oh, I can't do it anymore, I need to pull, I need to go see those kids, great, no problem. I'm not mad at the dog at that point, but that's where my gentle leader becomes fluid. I move back away, reestablish some distance, you pull that nose loop out, put it back on, work a little closer again to sort of um, reiterate to them what I want them to do all the time. Okay? Um, and then I might come back and then take that nose loop off and work at that threshold point again. So it's really a fluid process depending on what it is I'm seeing from my dog. Um, and that may take some time. Again, not every dog uh, uh, understands that their environment, uh, no matter what's going on in their environment around them, they need to listen in all those situations. So it's our job to help our dogs be right, but still keep that high expectation. One of the big mistakes that people happens is they miss that threshold point. They miss where their dogs start to make mistake after mistake after mistake. And we talk about this in agility quite a bit. Um, I know Kale's mentioned this before. If my dog makes two mistakes, they don't know it. Okay? So I need to go back to help them be successful. Same thing applies with walking my dog. If my dog has pulled on the leash and I've spoken to them and they're not following through and I've really had to help them with that leash a couple of times, I gotta change something. I gotta help them be right. That's where I can put that full back, that gentle leader back on. Okay? And again, that's the big process is that nose loop off, nose loop on. That's the biggest step. The transition from then gentle leader off to flat collar actually becomes quite quick because the, um, um, the information that they're getting when I do need to give them a little information with the leash is the same, provided my collar is well fit. That's something that uh, I know Ken has covered in the past on some of our videos. And I'm sure there'll be a link somewhere over here about collars or wherever it happens to be. So really when it comes down to it, it is the process of weaning. It's not an off, on or off scenario. It is an as needed basis to help my dog be successful. I want my dogs to be correct. I don't want them to make mistake after mistake after mistake. You will find that every dog is a little bit different, but it's your consistency, your clarity, and your high expectations that's gonna help those dogs understand what it is you want them to do anytime, every time, no matter the piece of equipment that they're wearing. So if you'd like to get any more information about gentle leaders and how to fit them and how they can be used, just click that card right there. I wanna thank Instructor C for joining us today. Now, if this is your first time on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We publish new videos every single week to help you to have a well-behaved four-legged family member. On that note, I'm Ken. I'm Steve. Happy training. <laughs>